Yeah. Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another video of ours. I'm solo today, JP is in here, but basically I'm going to go through the games coming up on Friday, give my predictions. Uh, JP put his predictions in as well. We drew 4-4 last week. I um, actually can't remember what the score is in total, but it will flash up in this video. But um, he's winning easily, isn't he, to be fair? Um and uh, I'll reference some of the games from last week as well. Didn't get a chance to do a review of the games last week, but uh, we got through them anyway. We'll start off with Derry City and Galway United at the Brandywell. And obviously the Candy Stripes were beaten last time out against Bohemians at Daly Mount Park. They would have been very disappointed with that defeat. Uh, first defeat of the season, though. Still second in the league, four points out of Galway in fifth place. But... Um, yeah, Derry would have been disappointed with the results, obviously, and the performance, I think, against against Bohemians in that particular game. Some of the goals they give away were very poor. Obviously, the first goal, uh, Sam Todd makes an error, essentially. But I think the second goal is nearly worse in many ways, because whereas the first goal was an error, an individual error, um, which can happen sometimes, you know, uh, the second goal was a poor corner that they gave away from Derry's point of view. <clears throat> they had enough bodies in the box to deal with it. And uh, they just didn't deal with it. It wasn't even what you would call a fantastic corner kick or anything like that. They'd really be disappointed they didn't deal with that. So I think Roy Higgins and the side would be very disappointed, of course. Obviously, key players coming into this game. Pat Huben is obviously one of them. He's the top scorer in the league now. So, um, you know, he, he's been brilliant for them. He's really settled in very well. We've talked about him before at Derry City so far. But um, many other players, of course, the likes of Adam O'Reilly as well, who's got a great engine in the middle of the park. He can get up and down. Uh, he can do a bit of everything, Adam. He's that type of player. Uh, very good off the ball as well. Can cover ground. I like that in the midfielder. Midfielder that can cover ground. It's it's massive. Um, from Galway's point of view, they come into the game having lost 1-0 against uh, Shamrock Rovers at Eamon DC Park. And look, they've started off fairly well, I think, too. Literally, pleased enough with the position they're in they'll be pleased enough with the points they're in they're hard to beat that's one of the things you'd want uh when you're coming up it's to be hard to beat and Galway certainly have been hard hard to beat um in this game again I don't think they'll be easily beat whatsoever I think um I do think it'll be tight Derry will be looking to hit back obviously having um having lost um and playing at home where they've been perfect this year so far actually um, it's actually the opposite for them this year so far. They've won every game at home, but they actually haven't won away from home yet this season either. Derry City. God, we haven't been bad on the road. I mean, the one 0 defeat against Table Toppers Shelburne uh, was nothing to um, be disappointed with. And all their games they have lost, actually. They've been beaten 1-0. Uh, Pats at home. Shamrock Rovers, of course, at home late on. And Shelburne. So, you know, they'd be looking at themselves and saying, look, we've, we've decent points on the board. And even in the games we did lose, they were very tight as well. So that's something that uh, I think that they'll be um, fairly pleased with going into the game. And, you know, from their point of view, I think, you know, key players, for me, David Hurley still, I think, you know, people say, often say how good, um, you know, God we are from set pieces, but you need somebody who had a good delivery as well. And uh, David Hurley certainly has that. Uh, in his locker and he's just good all-round midfield player I think he's a key player for them I've been impressed with Ed McCarthy so far this season as well I think Ed has been very good for Galway and gives them something else um, particularly on a counter-attack if you're countering Ed McCarthy he's very dangerous and um, I've been impressed with him he's a good player and he's uh, he's uh, settled into the Premier Division fairly well too so he's another player that Derry will have to be very mindful going into this game in my personal opinion um, they probably want more goals than the strikers as such Galway I know Stephen Walsh hasn't scored so far this season for example um, for them but um, Ed McCarthy and Hurley at this minute in time the way they're playing certainly from an attacking point of view are probably their two key players so I'm going to go for Derry City to win this but just about I'll go for Derry 2 Galway 1 now JP's more confident he's gone for Derry City to win by 3 goals to nil in this one so um, let us know what you think of the comments what's the score going to be in this game who are the key players, uh, if you're a Derry fan or a Galway fan, who who do you fancy going into the game in terms of being uh, key players, etc.? Let me know down in the comments. Next up, we have Drotty United and St. Patrick's Athletic at Weaver's Park. And both teams will be disappointed with their last uh, results. Of course, both teams were beaten the last time they played. Drotty beaten in Sligo. Um, I watched that game, actually, and uh, Pat's beaten home the shells. I was at that game. Um, so... 
Yeah, I mean, Drotted are coming into the game, you know, they're ninth in the league and four points, but only two points behind Pats, by the way, with a game in hand, which is interesting too. And um, it's a big game for both sides. Drotted are, usually when after the back of a bad performance, they come back fighting with a win, and uh, they did that at home to Bowes after they lost at home to Waterford. But the performance in Sligo was nothing compared to the uh, performance at home to Waterford, to be honest, which it doesn't even compare. Um they probably in the Sligo match they, they struggled to deal with the movement of Sligo Rovers, to be honest. Mata, um, Hartman and Power, very interchangeable, very link up very well. Um they support the striker very well, the the the, the two boys, uh, even Ellis Chapman as well, actually from midfield does that too. And um without talk, talking too much about Sligo, because we'll be talking them about them soon. But Drotted struggled to deal with them and conceded some obviously some goals in the game. But in terms of Drotted and the way they played, um I thought they were all right. Like they, they kind of they had chances in the game, they had opportunities uh, from set pieces that they could have taken. I think Franz Perot who hasn't scored for the club yet. Um you know, he missed two great chances in this game, I think. Two great chances in the game, and he'd be disappointed not to have scored. Uh, and there were at points where, you know, they were still in the game, etc. So you would be disappointed with that a little bit. But Perot and the international duty for Haiti, not sure if he'd be back for this game. Um, they might go with Callas up front, who knows? He's actually done well in, in international duties, on international duties, I should say, for the Irish under 19 side as well. Uh, Wogan, I think, played as well. Um, the goalkeeper for Drott of the United. But. Um, yeah, from Pat's point of view, then, look, it's been a very disappointing start. They had a trip to Minnesota, actually, um, for that friendly. And the interest to see if that did them any harm or any good, let's say. But they'll want to come back now into this game, get down to business and get the three points. It's a very, very important game for them. Uh, beat 1-0 over there in Minnesota. Um, not much you can really say about it. It's a friendly or whatever. But um, I suppose Drotted had a Leinster Senior Cup in the meantime when they beat the win, when they beat Athlone 4-0. Um you know, Adam Foley was on the mark in that game with a hat trick, but um, will he be available? I'm not really too sure either. But for this game, he's another option who could go up front. Although I always think he's better on the right. Um, generally, uh, scored a cracker last season in that two-one win at Weavers Park when Dr- the Dar Markey scored a late winger winner in that game. And um, you know, Markey will be important for Drotta coming into this game as well. They'll have to defend better. I- I'm still not convinced by Drotta defensively. I know they kept a clean sheet against Galway but overall defensively and um, they've a lot of new players in defense I often think when you have a lot of new players in certain areas of the pitch probably the hardest one to kind of gel quickly is your defense I think or the most important one to get going and uh, but Pats from their point of view haven't scored many goals this season they've only scored five goals in in the opening eight games for the players they have you'd have to say that's disappointing but uh it's a difficult one Keating um is a player that seems to be very isolated in the games. And Pats, I talked about how Sligo caused uh, drop of the problems with the way they interchange their attack and all, and etc. Pats don't do that. Um, their attacking players are far too deep an awful lot of the time. That's going to have to change. It will have to change. Otherwise, it's difficult to see Pats score more than a goal a game, in which they haven't done this season. And um, with their problems in goal, etc., it's often hard to see them keep a clean sheet so it's it's not, not a recipe for winning too many football matches is it so they need to get up and running very quickly very quickly pats um what do i think the score would be i think it'd be one all at weaver's park to be honest with you i think J- jp's gone with one all as well actually so we've we've we're both we're both thinking of the same singing off the same hymn sheet if you like there as well so yeah for me draw the united one st patrick's athletic one at uh at weaver's park now the next game is um obviously it's a massive one in the the calendar of Irish football and it's uh the Dublin Derby of Shamrock Rovers from the south you've got Bohemians from the north and you know hard to believe that Bows are head Rovers by a point actually because Bows have been poor this season I have to say um and probably have more points than they should have if I'm honest Rovers start very slowly again but again they've only won the feet you know what I mean they they they're gonna get going they won in Galway, Johnny Kenny's late goal was was big. I think Dar Burns playing well, very well for them at the moment as well. Uh, he set up that goal actually. Bowles had a great result. Obviously, Pat Fenlon or Pat Fenlon, uh, Declan Devine lost his job, and you know they had that manager bounce win in my opinion, or 
you know, against uh, Derry City with a 1 2 1, but they would have been pleased enough with the performance in the game, I think. Um, but now, of course, Alan, Alan Reynolds is the manager of, of the club, and uh, you know, he'll he'll take the hot seat for the first time when when they go to Tallis Stadium to take on Shamrock Rovers, and uh, be interesting to see how he sets them up. I think what well, Reynolds is very good at as a coach, but also when he was a manager at Waterford, for example, as well. Um, he's generally very good at setting up a team defensively in terms of set pieces and even attacking set pieces. Now, you wouldn't notice much change in the bowls set up, I think, immediately in that sense. But it should be interesting to see over time if you can improve that. That's been an Achilles heel, I think, for bowls for a couple of seasons, I might, I might add, hasn't it, to be fair? But um, it's often a tough game to predict this. Um, you know, form does often go out the window. I mean, Bowles had a great record for a while there against Rovers, even though Rovers were winning the league title, etc. And the Rovers have hit back a little bit now. And, um, you know, I think the last time Bowles might have beat them was 1-0 at Dalyman Park. Was that the first game that Keith Long actually lost his job? It might have been. Um, if I remember rightly, Bowles fans will know properly. Uh, so let me know in the comments if I'm, if I'm wrong there. But... Yeah, I mean, Shamrock Rovers, um, from their point of view, they'd like to see Kenny score because I think Kenny Kenny's movement is brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. I love watching Kenny's movement. It's brilliant. It's clever. Uh, he often he can be very unselfish in his movement as well. Um, and these are things sometimes are difficult to notice, to be honest, um, or unappreciated. But if you can add goals to his game for Shamrock Rovers, he can play, score plenty of goals for Sligo. Um, then you'll get the credit he deserves, to be honest. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on this game. Um, you know, Poom played for Estonia, so it'll be interesting to see if he plays on Friday for Shamrock Rovers too. And Pico, um, that's disturbed him a little bit, I think, Pico's international games for Cape Verde, to be honest with you. Um, and he was back in action uh, during the week too, so will he play or not? But they got off to Mark last week, so they did against Galway. Um and you never know what bowls in this game and with the new manager in. But I think they'll win it. I think they'll win at Shamrock Rovers. I think they'll win it 2-1. Uh, JP's got for 2-0. But I'll go for 2-1 Shamrock Rovers in this game. Let us know what you think in the comments as well. Give us a prediction. Any of the games, by the way. Uh, next up is Shelburne and Dundalk. And we've top against bottom here. Uh, 16 points. Five wins in a row for Shelburne after drawing the opening game in, in Waterford. Uh, nine goals, but three conceded. Three conceded. Dundalk bottom of the league on two points. They've played five games, but they're 14 points off Shelburne. No wins yet. The only team hasn't won yet. One goal scored, nine conceded. And they had the horrible result, didn't they, against Moctis in the Leinster Senior Cup 2 0 defeat. Now, normally I wouldn't look into that too much, but when you're so badly off form as a team, um, it does come into it a little bit. It was a strong enough team that should have been able to beat Moctis, if I'm honest with you. So it's a massive game. It's a massive week kind of for Dundalk, really, because um, if you like, they've got the loud derby on the Monday too at Oriel. And if they fail to pick up a win from any of these games, difficult to see them doing it in Shelburne, but just in a general sense, if they fail to pick up a win in any of the games, I, I just don't know where they're going to go. Um, will they look at the manager? <sighs> I think they might do if they don't win any of the games. If they went to Shelburne and got a shock win and then beat or even drew to draw the, they're probably saying, right, we'll see how this goes. But I think they're probably really going to look at the next two games, see how Dundalk featuring them really. And um, it's a big game for them, a bit like Bowes in terms of the late recruitment. But they look, they probably look even, they look even worse than Bowes, if I'm honest with you. Um, some of the performances have been very poor. Um, the Moctis one, obviously, but if we just talk about the league, the Sligo performance, the Galway performance, um, lost 1-0, I suppose, to a Pats team who have been really struggling and Pats probably should have won by more in all honesty. So it's not just the points, it's, it's the performances within that. Um, we know they play a high line often. Um, you know, they picked up a point against Waterford in which they probably should have won the game, to be honest. They're probably unlucky not to get a penalty as well, to be fair to them in that football match, I thought. So they're a little bit unlucky there. But they need to, they need to get wins like that. If you play well and perform, because it's hard to see them perform every week. 
uh, they need to be able to get the wins and, and they couldn't do it against Waterford even though they were on top for most of that football match um, it's difficult for them going to Shelburne a buoyant Shelburne a very well organised Shelburne a Shelburne that looked like a serious unit are playing with confidence it's very difficult to see Dundalk go there and get a result um, I'm interested to see how Dundalk set up in this game as well I think Andy Boyle uh, might be out by the way um, rumours of an injury there too so a lot of new players, a lot of new players that probably have failed to deliver, but is that because of too many new players that come in late, or is it just that they're not good enough? Is it a bit of both? Um, do they have time? Does Stephen O'Donnell have time? That's the question. Shelburne, though, went to Inchicore in their last game, and, you know, I think the other big thing about Shelburne this season, they've beaten Shamrock Rovers, they've beaten Bohemians, and they've beaten Pats. There's an old thing kind of almost like if you do well in your Dublin derbies, um, you're usually there thereabouts. Now, they've had three and they've won all three. And two of them are away from home. Um, the Pats' performance was arguably their best performance of the season. Um, the ball retention was very good in the game. Um, Tom Mark Coyle was really good. Sean Boyd was really good, I thought, too, for them in that particular game. Matty Smith between the lines and Will Jarvis um, obviously got the two goals. And they um, they probably controlled most of the match. Now, there was a bit at the end where I suppose Pats were putting them under a bit, a bit of, a little bit of pressure. You'd expect that, though, especially when the opposition, in this case, Pats get a goal back in their home. But, you know, it was a really good result for them and uh, a confidence boost. They just looked like a real unit. I was at that match, and they looked like a real unit, a team that even if things aren't going well in a game, that they have belief that they'll get a chance and they can be organised and, and keep things fairly tight. About Paddy Barrett's another one that's playing fantastically well at the moment. Fantastically well at the moment, Paddy Barrett. Um, when he's on it, he's, he's, he's top-notch in this league. He really is playing really well at the moment. And it's hard to see him not beating Dundalk. Now, JP went for... I think JP went for a 2-0 win. Just let me check that very, very quickly. Um, I think you did, yeah. I think Shell's the winner, but I think it might be 1-0, but it might be a comfortable 1-0, if that makes sense. Um, one, if you like criticism of Shell's, you might say sometimes these type of games, they don't score enough goals in these type of matches where you think, geez, they should be beating them well. But at the same time, you know, you just want to pick up the three points. And um, I, I I think I think it'd be a big surprise to me if Dundalk were to get anything out of this game. It'd be a major surprise to me if Dundalk were to win it. But with this league, stranger things have happened. You just wouldn't be sure. And that's the great thing about it. But for me, uh, Shelburne will win the game 1-0, JP says 2-0. Finally, Waterford and Sligo Rovers at the RSC. And you have a situation here where Sligo are third on nine points. I think they could have more points than that, the way they've played so far. Ten goals score for against. Waterford, just behind them on eight points. Um, nine goals scored, eight conceded, and they've won two, drawn two, lost two. And they've had a few performances lately that maybe weren't the best after the Pats' performance, arguably. The performance in Derry was poor. They'd be disappointed with the performance in Dundalk, but they'd be delighted to pick up the point there. Um... And obviously they've lost Rennie. Rennie's gone. Um, but Keith Long is still a good manager. He's a very good manager. And, um, you know, he, he knows what he's doing with this, with this Waterford squad. Um, potential to be very entertaining. I think this football match between Waterford and Sligo, both teams, I like the style of play. They're quite attacking. You know, Waterford, Parsons, Asamoa can be quite tasty at wide. Amund hangs in around the box. If you create chances for him, he will score. Feed the goal, he'll score and all that. And I talked about Sligo a little bit in the um, a small bit in the draw. The um, when I was talking about draw down, how they played in that match. I watched that match live. I was impressed again with Sligo. I've been very impressed with Sligo so far, to be honest. Overall, um, there seems to be a bit more heart and desire in the players this year as well. I'd have to say, um, John Ross Wilson is playing brilliant stuff. I knew he'd be a good signing for them. Um, I just think the Vada players with a bit more of that, but also their attack and trash, Hartman, Power, Mata, um, the way they interchange, the way they link up, um, 
they're very exciting to watch and they scored some lovely goals in that game. Ellis Chapman had added to the list as well, a midfielder who breaks forward, but they scored some lovely goals in that game against Drotted and they've probably been the end most the, the team that's entertained me the most this season. I've enjoyed watching the most so far is Sligo Rovers, to be honest with you. Um, I think they'll be very easy on the eye. They've defended quite well too, by the way, overall in their games. And even in some of the games they didn't win, they were a little bit unlucky. They're very unlucky at home to Shelburne, who are flying. Um, You know, they obviously drew against Derry. So they've played Shelburne, Derry and Shamrock Rovers, for example. Like, you know, and, um, you know, they played well enough against Shamrock Rovers too. And then they had the good wins that they picked up also. So I've been very impressed with them so far. Um, they look like, as I said, they really do look like a team unit and they've gelled very quickly. Ed McGinty is a massive, massive plus to that side as well because of the the presence he kind of has. Um, it's amazing what a goalkeeper can do to a team and the presence he can have for the team. And the presence McGinty has is huge for Saigo Rovers. Fantastic sign to get him back in. And um, yeah, I mean... <sighs> The game itself is difficult. Waterford are quite strong in midfield. Now, Barry, Barry Bagley might be available for this game. We don't know. He was called up to international duty by uh, Northern Ireland under-21s, and he, he wasn't available. I don't think he played in the games. I think he picked up an injury, so he's big for them. But if he doesn't play, he'll probably have McDonald and um, Alec Keefe in midfield, who've been quite good too. So, you know, they like to control the game in the middle of the park, and both teams are strong enough, though, in the middle of the park. It'd be a really exciting game. I think this one, um, it might be a game I have to watch back actually. But yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking result wise. Um, I have to see what I said. JP probably agrees with the entertainment value that I'm talking about because he's gone for two two in this game. I've gone for one all, but um, like I say, even that one all could be entertaining. Um, JP's result sounds good. I have to say. At 2-2. But I'm going for one all in this one. But let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Let me know. Uh, give us a few predictions for all the games. Any key players in the Waterford Sligo game that uh, that you look out for? Or what players have impressed you in general this season, actually? Um, you know, it doesn't matter what fan you are. What player has impressed you in general this season? Um, quite a few of them for me to name. I won't name any of them. But let me know what you think in the comments as usual. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed before and we'll talk to you soon. Um, in terms of matches, actually, just before I go, coming this week, still not sure about Friday. Monday, I'm definitely going to Dundalk and Drotted. I'm going to vlog that. I'm going to then go to Richmond Park to watch St. Pat's and Sligo. I'm not going to vlog that one, though. Um, be bit much of a lot of vlogging too in the day. Um, I want to a bit ra- relax a little bit watching the Pat's Sligo game, but... Um, Possibly Shamrock Rovers and Bowes on Friday, but I'm just waiting to see about a few things. But um, yeah, we'll leave it there.